to have you, Miss Carol.
good morning. I want to welcome you all here to the uh, press conference for the 5G Food Resiliency Project. Uh, there's no need to sit down. We do have chairs that are socially distanced and spaced here, about six feet apart. So please feel, feel free to sit down if you want. The speakers, if you can gather on that side of the room underneath those three heaters, that'd be great. And we're going to have a mic that's live right there for Q&A. When uh, reporters have questions, you can use this uh, microphone right over here. We are going to have a number of speakers get up for about 90 seconds to two minutes. We're also going to be playing you a few videos. Hopefully, you can all see the video screen over here. Restrooms are through there to the, to the, the, the barn to the right if you need to use it. And we should end on time just before 11 AM. So we hope that everybody gets a chance to ask questions. Uh, we are live streaming this over YouTube, and we will have all that uh, background footage and B-roll for you as well. But I want to introduce you to someone that's actually been quite extraordinary to work with, the person who uh, represents and owns Swans Trail Farms. So if I can ask Nate to come up and just uh, welcome you all to his place. Come on up, Nate. Uh, welcome to uh, Swans Trail Farms. Uh, my name is Nate Krause. Uh, I'm the second generation um, uh, farmer here. Uh, my parents, uh, Ben and Carol, and my beautiful wife, I don't see her, but she's in the, probably in the office over there. But um, just a quick history uh, about what we, where, where we're at and where, where we're going here is uh, as uh, in the early 80s, my parents bought this place as a dairy farm, and believe it or not, you are standing where the cows used to stand. Uh, this is an old stall barn we had. Um, and oh, there she is. There's my beautiful wife in the back. But um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, anyways, um, uh, the, this is an old star barn. Um, we um, quickly, the dairy industry was not the best dairy industry to be in at the time. And um, we, uh, we decided to kind of transfer what we did. And now we're growing pumpkins, apples, strawberries, and sweet corn. Um, we're really excited about this technology. Um, that, that, that we're bringing in here, it's really going to make it easier for us to get data, analyze that data, and then make decisions on, on the data we get. Um, and so, uh, really appreciate uh, Snohomish County. Uh, I really feel like we have a really good, um, uh, they're, they're always behind us, and they're always, always what we, they're looking out for us. So I appreciate Snohomish County, Linda Nunzik, the 5G innovation. Uh, Open Innovation Lab and all their partners uh, that are with them. So um, welcome, everybody. If you want any questions afterwards, feel free to ask me. Uh, we'll be around. And uh, thanks for coming, and welcome. To be a farmer and make it, you got to be innovative in order to survive in this industry. You're very dependent on the weather. You're very dependent on what Mother Nature wants to bring you. They kind of said, if you dream it, we can make it happen. So I'm like, well, I got all kinds of dreams, so let's, let's see what we can do. If we lose these farms, we lose our food security. Every time a piece of land goes out of production, it's heartbreaking, because we can never replace that land. That land becomes a subdivision. It becomes a strip mall. And to keep these farms here, they have to be economically viable. The commercial side of rural America doesn't have that access to the data and the applications and the infrastructure that could help them become a lot more efficient. The stuff we take for granted is not something that these farmers get to enjoy because in many cases, they're just precluded from access to the internet. What we hope to do here is democratize that technology for farmers. Getting to a point where they can use data to inform a more efficient approach will enable them to be more competitive and ultimately enable them to set up the farm so that they can pass it on to the next generation. Technology can be really exciting, but it's only as valuable as the outcomes, right, that we can help drive for the communities that are leveraging this technology. Whether it's a small boutique farm, or it's a large commercial farm, or somewhere in between. This project provides the information that they need to be economically viable. 
So the vision behind what we're doing here is to try to bring together entrepreneurs, industry partners, public and private institutions, and really bring the expertise to solve real world problems. One of the things that we have to do as part of that is to bring growers and farmers who actually are living this every day and have the real problems and start working with technology companies so that you can build solutions that are actually meaningful and will deliver value. In order for the American farmer to survive, we have to improve our efficiencies in our operations. We have to figure out a way to produce more food on less acres. Nature is complex, it's dynamic, it's different every day. There is no industry comparable to farming in terms of the potential volume and effective use of data. But there's also no industry that has been further disconnected from data than farming. We're here to open the door. Snohomish County is a county of about 850,000 people. Uh, we're the next county north of Seattle and King County. We're an extremely diverse county in terms of geographies and industries, businesses and people. Every industry is important, but I can't think of one that's more important than agriculture. It's, it, it's our sustainability. It's one of the industries that has not seen as much innovation from a, a data perspective. And for smaller farmers and for larger farmers, just that access today will have a meaningful impact to their bottom line. Doing it at a row farm is going to give us an actual set of conditions to test this technology out in and make sure when it does go to market at this scale, we've tested it in a real environment, not just simply in someone's backyard. You look at the brands behind it, they're industry leading, really powerful brands that if they wanted to, could probably try and say, hey, we're going to solve this problem themselves. But actually they've said, actually, if we work together, we solve the problem faster and we solve the problem in a better way. So that, that's pretty monumental. What you're seeing is that combination of big companies and small startups. The big companies have the ability to bring those platforms, to bring capabilities, tools, foundations for innovation. Those are things that many startups don't have. They don't have access to big licenses or platforms or hardware or bandwidth or antennas. 5G oil is really bringing those capabilities to startups. At T-Mobile, we are building a 5G network that'll reach all Americans. But we also know this is something that is much bigger than ourselves. And that's why we're excited to be part of the Food Resiliency Project. It's all about taking the tribal knowledge of the farmer and the technology people. You have to find ways to, to integrate and communicate, building tools and systems to help people who are doing God's work to get this done, you know, really just making it happen. These technologies are going to power things like smart farms, smart hospitals, smart cars, smart factories. So Microsoft is a big believer in those technologies. But we also know that there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and the best way to do that is to get out on the farm, so to speak, and do some real life test cases. To survive, uh, farms need to be efficient. And that means they need access to the latest technology, including you know, connected solutions. When we talk about farm to table, this is really technology to farm to table. You really complete the circle. When everybody worried about our health, everybody worried about food scarcity, when we started, at this 5G Open Innovation Lab, we have this notion that it takes a village. It's a really an entire chain that comes together. This is probably the best way that we can give back to the, to the society. When you look at 5G together with edge computing, uh, these are building blocks that other industries are using. A lot of what we're learning here as far as building a infrastructure, a platform for use case delivery. And those use cases are gonna be across a spectrum of verticals. Whatever we learn here is definitely gonna be able to be applied across other industries. We're out in a, a real county with real farms, building real networks and starting to run real use cases. And I think that's the, the really exciting thing. This is not just a lab exercise. This is, let's get out there. Let's just make this work. At the end of the day, it's, it's the good that we do with technology and it's the change that we bring about in the world. And the 5G Open Innovation Lab is that venue. The potential of having technology on your farm and learning from that technology is, is going to be a huge plus for us. Your farmers are the most innovative people you will ever meet. If something's broken, they will figure out how to fix it. And that's really not any different than the technology world. 
they see a problem and they fix a problem. So it's gonna be really exciting to see how these two worlds marry and the respect that we know they're gonna have for each other and what they do. It's a very exciting time for agriculture and for technology. everyone. My name is Jim Smitsis. I'm the, one of the founders of the 5G Open Innovation Lab. And to start today, I wanted to tell a very quick story uh, about how we got here. And that started with a pretty comical phone call from a dear friend and partner of ours, Kendi Yamaguchi from Snohomish County, who was at the time on her pel Peloton exercising saying, Jim, we got to figure out how to help farmers with food resiliency. Do you have any ideas? And that conversation started the journey that lasted about two and a half months to get us here. Now, we brought technology here. We brought some of the best vendors in the world. We're bringing together cloud-scale technologies to help farmers, like uh, Nate and like Andrew uh, Albert from Albert, um, Albert Farms, to get us to this point. What I'm excited about and what we're going to be able to do here today and eventually over time is to use this technology for basic connectivity to help growers understand their operations better, become more efficient, and lessen their dependencies on over-irrigation and chemical usage. And it's because of this farm and the privilege that Nate and his family have given us and Andrew Albert and his family have given us to co-experiment with them, I firmly believe will be the background for and the pinning of the technology needed to help move this agriculture industry forward and ultimately support their resiliency uh, as well. And so with that, we could not have gotten here without the support of our friends at Snohomish County, without the research support from Washington State University, from a whole host of partners that support us in the lab, and companies that we've had the privilege to work with at the lab as well. And so with that, what I'd like to do is introduce uh, Dave Summers, who is our county executive for Snohomish County, to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Jim, and welcome everybody to Snohomish County. Uh, what an exciting day. I just, uh, thanks uh, to the Krause family for just uh, stepping forward and uh, doing this. It's just an amazing, amazing achievement. I'm so proud it's happening here in Snohomish County. And the 5G Innovation Lab, Microsoft, T-Mobile, all these amazing partners. You know, one thing I really pride myself in, and I think we pride ourselves in in Snohomish County is uh, all pitching in together and putting aside differences and just working to solve problems. So this is a fantastic example of that. And, you know, I, um, as I was driving here today, I went past the old smokestack in Monroe, the old uh, milk condensary uh, there, and go, dro drove down the valley and all the old heritage dairy farms. This used to be one of the most productive dairy counties in the nation, uh, frankly. But we are growing agriculture here. We're growing in acreage. We're growing in number of farmers. Uh, we're growing in uh, types of crops and things we're doing here. And it's one of the few places really in Washington where we're growing, in Western Washington especially. So this is just uh, an amazing opportunity for us. So as we look to the past, uh, fantastic history, but we know that all businesses have to adapt and change and innovate. And this is no more true than right here today what we're looking at is the taking of technology and applying it to agriculture. And so to the Krause family, uh, they're a centennial family here in the Valley, been here over 100 years, but they're clearly uh, grateful for the past, but looking towards the future, an amazing future, an eye on the future. So congratulations to them, happy to support uh, the family, all of agriculture, and all our partners uh, in these endeavors. Just so uh, proud and happy that you're here in Snohomish County. Thank you, Jim. And with that, I think I'm introducing uh, a statement from Congressman Rick Larson. I'm Representative Rick Larson, and I'm sorry that I can't be there in person with you all, but I, I'm happy I'm able to join you virtually for the announcement of this very important Snohomish County initiative. I've said it for a while now that you can't have a big league economy with little league infrastructure. That's true for roads, bridges, highways, transit, and increasingly for innovative technologies like 5G. 
Now, due to the ongoing pandemic, Washington State food growers and food distributors have had fewer opportunities to meet face to face, but they have met a growing demand for food. Now, in the 117th Congress, one of my goals is to facilitate local stakeholder engagement to spur U.S. leadership and innovation in emerging technology initiatives. That's why the opening of the 5G Open Innovation Labs Field Lab in Snohomish County is such exciting news. With the help of Federal CARES Act funding, Snohomish County's Food Resiliency Program was able to bring food producers, distributors, and tech companies to the table to create solutions to strengthen the food chain resiliency. The Field Lab gives local producers the ability to gather more data and to make informed decisions about growing their crops, which will lead to increased production. Today's announcement is an important step to address the COVID-19 pandemic's impact on the region's agriculture sector, on the food supply chain, and on long-term hunger. But it's also an important opportunity to prepare for the future and to ensure businesses, workers, and consumers can all benefit from 5G. Now, I'll continue working in Congress to support investment in the research, development, and the deployment of 5G technologies to make sure projects like this one can continue to be successful. And again, thank you for inviting me. I hope to visit the field lab, lab in person uh, one day. Thanks so much. Unfortunately, uh, like with Car Congressman Larson, who got called back to Washington, D.C. introduce Derek first. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Susan, Congre Congresswoman Susan Del Beni also got called back to Washington, D.C. And so I have a prepared comment that she's written that I'll read, and then I'll introduce uh, Derek to come up and say a few words as well. So uh, projects like the 5G Open Innovation Lab highlight the strength of Washington's innovation economy and demonstrate how our agriculture and high-tech industries can join forces to benefit the entire region. These Federal CARES Act funds were, are being used creatively to fight critical issues Washingtonians face, including food insecurity and climate change. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman Susan Del Beni, for your statement and support, and also uh, Congressman Rick Larson as well. Without your help, we wouldn't be here and certainly would not have the momentum that we've started today. And so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Derek Senderson, who's the director of the Washington State Department of Agriculture, to come up and say a few words. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here today. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, um, think about agriculture in this state. They think it's just kind of a, a, a static industry, right? It's not much. It's it's the same year after year. But no, that's not true at all. I mean, uh, Washington agriculture is dynamic. Uh, we're we're constantly going through innovation and uh, and um, uh, you know, sort of reinventing ourselves as an industry. So I mean, this is a great example of a project that it, we need more of. We need to, to help build the vitality of, uh, of rural Washington. And part of that is having this kind of infrastructure to, uh, to support uh, not only agricultural activities, but if you think about other things that are you know, really needed in the, in the rural part of the state of Washington. So congratulations to all of you that participated. And I really want to thank you know, uh, County Executive Summers, Linda Nunzig, I mean, the, you guys create such a, a wonderful environment for agriculture to thrive in an, in an urban county. I mean, this is something that's, um, you know, that's really unique and uh, really, I, we appreciate that at the state level and thank you so much for what you do and thanks for all, all that uh, you do. So, today and congratulations. Uh, thank you, Derek. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to also invite uh, Stephen, who is from the Department of Commerce for the state of Washington, to come up and say a few words as well. Thanks, Stephen. Good morning. My name is Stephen Maheshwari, and I serve as Governor Inslee's sector lead and director of economic development for the tech sector at the Washington State Department of Commerce. I also co-chair the Washington Internet of Things Industry Council. On behalf of Commerce, I'd like to congratulate the team at the 5G Open Innovation Lab on the launch of the Food Resiliency Project. By connecting farms and growers, 
to 5G, uh, the lab will enable farms to leverage different types of data to strengthen their operations and bottom lines during these challenging times. In fact, the field lab highlights how connectivity is one of the key economic infrastructure issues of our time. Connectivity underlies the development of small businesses and startups across all industries in Washington State. And we're still beginning to identify how 5G will accelerate enterprise capabilities through the power of Internet of Things, through specialized devices and sensors, through edge computing and new insights driven by new data. To that end, in 2019, the Department of Commerce designated the 5G Open Innovation Lab, uh, Open Innovation Partnership Zone in the city of Bellevue, of which the lab was a founding member. The zone was one of the newest innovation partnership zones created by commerce to support emerging innovation clusters by partnering with industry. So to that end, we're extremely appreciative of the lab's continued partnership with the state and now with Snohomish County because it is unique public-private partnerships like these that make Washington State a global leader in connecting industry to 5G and will allow us to accelerate the economic development of multiple tech-adjacent sectors, including agriculture. We look forward to continuing to support the 5G Open Innovation Lab as they evangelize the positive impact of 5G on enterprises across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, okay, uh, a little bit about my background, not that we're here to talk about me, but I was at Microsoft for 14 and a half years, and if, or sorry, 14 years, and if, if you know much about Microsoft, you know that the ethos of the company is around partnerships. We've taken the same approach here at the 5G Open Innovation Lab. Since day one, we've been about our partners and how important those partners are to the success of what we can accomplish together. And so, as a result of that, I'd like to invite a string of speakers to come up from our partners, including Sue Boyd of Microsoft, Haggai Penn of Amdocs, Phil Kippen from VMware, uh, and um, we'll bring Steve Mantle from Innovate Ag up, as well as Michael Anderson from Expedo. I'll have them come up individually without me having introduced them, and then we'll run some videos of partners who weren't able to be here with us today, but we have some video statements from them as well. And so with that, Sue, I'd like to bring you up to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. My name is Sue Boyd. And as a representative of Microsoft, as a board member of 5G Open Innovation Labs, but also as a Washington State resident raising two children in the area, I am thrilled to be part of the Food Resiliency Project. I'd like to begin by thanking everyone involved for the opportunity to participate. As you heard on the video, this project is the result of collaboration across a wide range of stakeholders, from governments and growers to technology providers, large and small. And when I think about the name of the project, the Food Resiliency Project, that word resiliency resonates with me at this time. This project is about food resiliency, of course, but it's also resiliency at a deeper level. In the last year, the world has thrown a lot at all of us. When we respond by coming together to solve problems and to use technology for good, that's resiliency as a society. And I am proud to play a role in that. This project is important because it will help our local farms and food security in the state but also because of the potential it represents. We're entering into an era where there'll be available high-speed, low-latency computing coupled with cloud computing and edge computing technologies. This will usher in the next generation of innovation. We can already anticipate the benefits that this will have on agriculture, on manufacturing, healthcare, and so much more. But like any new technology leap, we also know that it will enable innovations that we can't even dream of yet. And I, for one, can't wait to see what's next. At Microsoft, our mission is to enable every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And that's why we're so thrilled to be part of 5G Open Innovation Labs, the Food Resiliency Project, 
helping to bring the benefits of 5G to our customers and to partner with local communities to push the bounds of what's possible. Thank you. Good morning, uh, I'm Hagai Pen with Amdocs. Uh, so Amdocs joined the 5G Innovation Lab to fuel 5G technology and use cases. And for us, it's very exciting to be here today with an established group of uh, partners and innovative companies in order to drive the agricultural industry forward. Uh, as a company that focuses on um, services and products in the communication industry. Uh, we want to leverage our expertise in network deployment, um, rollout, in order to uh, tie all of this together and bring innovation uh, using 5G technology uh, here to uh, our partners um, and to the agricultural industry. What we want to do here is basically leverage this ent entire ecosystem and partner in order to onboard and deploy the core startups and uh, their applications. Explore with them together the relevant use cases and what we can do with uh, 5G technology specifically for this industry. We believe that once uh, we harness this technology, uh, we can help farmers basically leverage 5G cloud and IoT to automate uh, run data-driven processes that will create a lot of efficiency in their day to where they work and basically drive the food chain resiliency, which uh, we seek to do in this uh, domain. Uh, and we're also excited that we can leverage this great opportunity and partner ecosystem uh, towards creating an overall 5G solution blueprint that we can cross over to additional industries and take this seed and grow it even forward. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Phil Kippen, and I lead our solution architects and field engineering team for VMware. Um, community is one of our, our key uh, and most important company values. And I think it, it really shapes everything that we do uh, at VMware. It's how we develop our products, how we support our customers and the community, um, what we give back, and certainly what we focus on as our priorities. Um, I think we also today happen to be building uh, one of the most advanced platforms for edge computing, uh, delivering capabilities uh, today to help application vendors deliver new services, 5G services, uh, to businesses, enterprises, and also telecom. When we bring those two things together and we find the opportunity to bring those two things together, something really significant happens. And being a part of the 5G Open Innovation Lab, the companies that are associated with this lab, the technology and the innovation, and certainly the support and the passion from everybody uh, has been incredibly refreshing and something that I think is gonna offer tremendous value uh, to farmers, and especially farmers in agriculture being an underserved with respect to technology, uh, market sector and, and businesses really can benefit um, certainly in, in this area, I think, with the technology that the partners are bringing. So I'm super excited to, to be a part of this. VMware is excited to be a part of this. Um, we're going to bring all that we have uh, to work with the startups and empower the startups uh, to really make an impact in, in the food resiliency product for, project for, uh, for our farmers. So. Uh, I, I guess, you know, one of the things that I noticed in being here as well is, is not only do we have some really interesting stuff that we're going to do, but we've got one of the best views uh, out here. And I think even though it's raining today, uh, I'm still really proud and, and happy to be out here and, again, excited to, to be a part of this project. So thank you. Good morning. I'm Steve Mantle, I'm founder and CEO of Innovate Ag. Uh, we're a ag data analytics company based out of Eastern Washington and a Microsoft partner. 
And this is really a dream come true for us. When um, you first spoke with Jim and Kurt with 5G Open Innovation Lab about uh, really joining the uh, cohort as a startup member uh, several months ago, we, um, there were lots of potential options. Um, never did I think it would come together this fast. And so this has been fantastic. Um, and often working with carriers to bring together connectivity to underserved rural areas, it's a huge challenge. And these things, they move slowly. Um, so huge hats off today to the 5G team uh, for really moving on a dime and making this happen. Now our focus is really on the grower. And it's focused on empowering growers with data. I spent a dozen years at Microsoft, and one of the challenges I found there was, hey, we're doing lots around data, but how do we really get it down to the end users that can really use it and put it to work for them and really for our, our food supply chain? Uh, and so that's why I'm so happy to be here today. Now, one of the challenges that growers have is connectivity. And without connectivity, we can't really connect, uh, collect data, nor can we actually enable the grower to view and act on that data. And so this is really a foundation today to break through on that. The other core piece is the edge computing component. Um, a lot of the data that we are collecting uh, for growers is um, heavy data, if you will. It's imagery, and one of the sensors that we use to collect data where we run through orchard rows, we end up with about collecting about a terabyte per hour of data. And if we don't have edge computing and the network to support that data transfer, the way we do that today is something called sneaker net, affectionately uh, known, which is basically take the data, go drive it 30 miles down the road, put it on the server, process it, and bring it back to the grower. This really breaks through on that. And so we're very excited about doing that, tying that together with labor data, with chemical application data, and with sensor data on environmental variables, uh, soil moisture variables, nutrient variables, and again, bring that together so that a grower can ultimately make more informed decisions on how to secure, basically, the supply chain and end up with higher productivity at a lower cost to them. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Michael Anderson. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Expedo. We uh, help enable enterprise wireless networks and orchestrate devices uh, to do valuable things. It's interesting being part of this project. I was talking with, with Andrew and really read a lot more about agriculture than I ever have in my life. And one of the things that stood out to me is in the very near term, you know, we've got to feed 10 billion people on this planet. 10 billion, that's a huge problem. Double production, but with scarce resources, falling water tables, pandemics, extreme weather, and I'm sure a whole host of challenges. Um, and as a technology provider, I think, you know, given all that's happened in the past years, we tend to get a little bit of an ego, right? That technology can solve everything. But what's really exciting here is that as technology providers, we get to sit down with a small community of farmers, with Andrew, with Nate, their families, right? With hundreds of years of collective experience to match up with our technology, to come up with practical use cases, Andrew, that are easy to use, right? Customer experience is great. That gives homage that, you know, time is, is money, right? And everything makes a difference. And what a fantastic opportunity on these small farms and these small communities to come together and do the small things, to do that crawl, walk, run, to think big and start small, to scale fast, to solve global problems. So it's a great opportunity. And from our perspective, with this ecosystem of farms and technology, I learned from my great mentors, right? And, and he always told me that nothing is impossible. Some things just haven't been tried yet. So challenge accepted. Thank you very much. Hello, this is John Saw, 
Executive Vice President of Advanced and Emerging Technology at T-Mobile. Today is an exciting day as we kick off this collaboration with Snohomish County and our partners at the 5G Open Innovation Lab to create a state-of-the-art agriculture technology field lab. When we look at use cases for 5G, farming has to be one of the most compelling. Yet, few industries have been as limited to date by data connectivity. With 5G, all that is changing. All around the world, farmers are embracing wireless technology, finding better ways to feed and sustain the planet. At T-Mobile, we are rolling out a 5G network that supports all use cases of 5G. We call it 5G for all because it is built to reach everyone, including those living in rural America and driving the industries such as farming that are so vital to our 5G networks combined with artificial intelligence can help farmers create predictive models that dramatically reduce risk and increase the efficiency of farms of all sizes. Sensors and systems that monitor crops and soil conditions provide farmers with real-time data to quickly adjust the operations, better deploy their resources, and even run some farming operations remotely. We cannot wait to see the 5G innovation that occurs as we work together here in Snohomish County to build the next big thing in agriculture. Thank you. Hi, this is Caroline Chen. I'm with the Intel Corporation. I am a vice president of our network platforms group. First of all, I'd like to congratulate 5G Open Internet lab in Snohomish County for the launch of the food resiliency project. This is an excellent collaboration between public, private and community partners leveraging the power of 5G and edge compute to support industry that power our social fabrics like agriculture. At Intel, we're very passionate about using our technology such as Xeon based servers with our software like Smart Edge and Openness to help the industry to realize the full potential of 5G and edge to unlock the value for our people, business and society at a global scale. We are working alongside the industry bringing our technology, software expertise from edge to core to the cloud. The lab is an excellent example of this type of collaboration that's so important to innovate in entirely new ways. I'm very excited to see this lab have further accelerate development and testing of new applications and services, not just for agriculture, but for different industrial use cases in our rural community. This is an open, robust environment for developers to create and test these applications in dedicated environment with access to 5G capable CBRS and LTE based network edge compute. Love to see more of these and really looking forward to see this field lab thriving and helping our country, our community. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is James Feger and I'm the general manager of the service provider business here at F5. We are thrilled to join other technology leaders to build creative and robust solutions for the food resiliency project through the 5G Open Innovations Lab. As a global company, it is important to F5 to be able to provide access to our technologies and expertise for all people and industries, even those outside dense urban areas. And that is why we are so excited to be part of helping farmers deliver fresh food to family tables. For this project, F5 is contributing our products that will help deliver and secure the essential applications through the 5G network, as well as providing the security and traffic management for parts of the IoT and 5G network itself. These products help ensure the integrity of the data and analytical insights being leveraged for the project. While 5G networks are known to deliver higher speeds for your mobile device, 5G architectures also speed work processes to deliver heavier and more distributed workloads with complex functionality that was not previously possible. On farms, 5G and IoT can help measure growth, deliver soil sample data, monitor changing conditions of the crop, and aid logistics to improve the supply chain. 
While this is the first of many projects, it is a 5G and IoT blueprint, which can be applied to many other industries. It is extremely exciting. Finally, we are honored to be part of the economic recovery for independent Washington farmers by delivering 5G technologies focused on improving the supply chains that were disrupted by the COVID pandemic. We're proud to work alongside other dynamic partners, organizations, and leaders to make this happen. Thank you. to us. Uh, we all like to think in the technology world we're on the leading edge of innovation. Uh, very much so the research efforts that Wazoo's been pursuing is on the bleeding edge of innovation. And more importantly, as this technology helps to advance the efficiency of, of agriculture and farming here, uh, they're going to help to define what are the new job skills of the future that will be needed to sustain operations going forward. And so with that, we have a recorded statement from Gabriel Lehu that we'll play now from Wazoo. As a soil scientist with Washington State University in Western Washington, I see firsthand the challenges farmers face in adapting to variable rainfall patterns, both variability within a single growing season and year-to-year -year variability. Climate change predictions for the region indicate reduced rainfall during the growing season, which only further heightens the importance of adaptive management strategies and efficient use of our natural resources. For these reasons, I'm excited to partner with the project team and collaborating farmers to use real-time weather and soil moisture data and enhanced data connectivity provided by the 5G infrastructure to help farmers make informed and efficient irrigation management decisions. With soil moisture monitoring, assessment of plant health and productivity, and a bit of experimentation, we can determine irrigation thresholds that maximize crop yield and quality and irrigation water productivity in the face of variable weather patterns. Using this infrastructure, farmers can evaluate conditions in real time, make data-driven decisions, and even turn on the irrigation system, all from their smartphone or other device. At this time, we have a number of reporters here in the room that might have questions for the team, and you can direct your questions. Either I can repeat them for you, or we have a mic over here. Anybody want to ask a question? Or we can break and, and do Q&A online as well and see if there's any questions that we have from folks that are online. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Rick with the Puget Sound Business Journal. Um, I was just curious, you know, as this sort of kicks off, um, what kind of technology specifically are you guys going to be testing out and what sort of metrics are you going to be looking at to measure the success of the program? So we have a mic over here if anybody wants to answer the question. What type of technologies will we be uh, uh, testing. Um, does anybody want to dive deeper into the technologies we'll be testing over here? Go ahead. Anybody? Please. You can use that right there. Ah, perfect. Hey, uh, Steve Mantle, Innovate Act again. So we'll be using a number of different technologies. We're basically, as Gabe LaHue mentioned with WSU, which is again really key uh, on the partnership on data interpretation and making sure that it's something that the growers can actually use. Uh, the foundations are really starting with environmental data. So we have weather stations uh, in orchard and uh, at the farms um, is one. Uh, and partnered with WSU's Ag WeatherNet, which you can take a look at at weather.wsu.edu, we're bringing these farms online with the state agriculture weather network. Using that, they'll actually be able to apply uh, disease models, pest models, and various other ag-centric uh, planning models as to uh, what the implications are for the farm based on uh, growing degree days, uh, based on um, uh, weather temp, RH, solar radiation, uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the baseline. And then from there, we actually are layering in soil moisture sensors. And so these are measuring at depths all the way down to two feet, uh, both on soil moisture, soil temperature, as well as salinity. Uh, that helps a grower ultimately, uh, again, tie into models. WSU and, and Gabe LaHue is a, a soil scientist, and so that's a kind of a great tie-in there as well, on where do they need to um, irrigate, uh, what the frequency needs to be. Unique to Western Washington is there's a lot of rain. 
Um, and so um, it's not business as usual in terms of how uh, irrigation is normally done across the core farming sector on the other side of the state. And so this really helps WSU learn as well as uh, the growers learn as to how they need to augment uh, both on the water side of things, irrigation, and then finally on um, the, the soil temperature helps on germination. And then finally, uh, in the apple orchard specifically, we're bringing in a, something called a cartographer that will provide uh, imagery analysis uh, from a ATV slash side-by-side, and the grower can actually understand what the density is of uh, blooms earlier on in the season, or flowers, uh, that helps inform thinning uh, and later pruning, um, as well as ultimately yield predictions uh, throughout the season, which ultimately is what a grower is working toward. Thank you. Great. Does anybody want to add to the application discussion? Okay, great. Any other questions? Thank you. Did to the last four. Go ahead. Uh, we, thank you. It's a great question, Julie. We, we are operating these for a term of three to five years um, is our current plan. Our good friend Andrew Albert was blending in the background, and so I'd like to actually invite Andrew. We have we're two field labs today here, and also Andrew's farm, which is just outside of Arlington, and we haven't had a, an opportunity for Andrew to introduce himself. Andrew, you want to take a moment just to introduce yourself? Thank you. Yeah, my name is Andrew Albert. I uh, run Andrew's Hay up in Arlington, Washington. Um, we raise a lot of hay, seed crops, wheat. Uh, corn, I work with a lot of dairies, and we're always looking to, you know, kind of change with the times, and a lot of the industry is, the commercial side of it, I feel, is kind of, I don't want to say dying off, but it's just changing in a direction that I don't really want to go, so uh, when I was approached by Linda about this, um, yeah, I was like, yeah, let's, you know, well, basically anything Linda wants to do, I'm game for. She doesn't have to tell me what it is, so... Uh, and then it was a whirlwind, you know, all this, I show up to a meeting and there's 20 people there and I'm like, God, I hope I can remember everybody's names. So <laughs> I think I've got it now. But anyway, so um, yeah, Steve was out the other day installing the moisture sensors that he was just describing and I'm basically just excited to see where this can go because they said if you can dream it, you know, they can do it. So uh, yeah, I don't even, we'll see where it, we'll see where it goes once we get it all, all in place. All right, with that, I think I'm going to close it out with questions, but obviously we're all here. We have a lot of representatives from the different partners in the company, so if the reporters and producers that are here have other questions for them, please take advantage of the opportunity. We really appreciate everyone coming out on a, a cold morning in a pandemic to a press conference. This does show that the, the world is changing. We're going to beat this. Thank you all for being here.